what is your advice for someone who's been a player for a long time for Dungeons and Dragons, but they want to use this product to be like the first time that they dungeon master? This adventure is perfect for that kind of player because what they're doing is they're, we're taking what is initially an adventure that is a player they might have played through. It's been out for a while, but expanding on that. So the same structure of keeping it close to home, keeping it constrained, dealing with the people in the town, that's the kind of thing that people, players who are making the step to, to DMing, they know because they've been there and they kind of feel it. And what this does is it sort of takes that and allows you to expand your experience from here's what I did and I liked as a player to here's some things that I've never seen before as a player, but I feel comfortable doing this, them as a DM because I've been sort of led through the increasing steps in the course of the adventure. For this project in particular, it is such a kind of a quintessential D&D adventure and, and monster crawl, dungeon crawl. Uh, what's your advice for running this game? Right, um, so I think that this book is the, the perfect book for the second D&D experience. If you've played perhaps Lost Mine of Fandelver, but any other D&D adventure, if you've played it and you've really loved the storytelling aspect and you'd really like to be in charge of that storytelling aspect for other players to enjoy it, I think that this is the perfect book, especially if you're really into the themes of mysteries and exploration and uh, an eldritch plot that is unfolding and becoming a little scary at the end. I would say my advice for running it is, you know, really dig into the material and then uh, come up with uh, ways to engage your player characters. And the book provides all of the advice that you need to keep everybody uh, really invested in trying to save Phandalin. There is definitely some guidance to help um, dungeon masters really create an immersive experience. Um, there is an, an optional corruption mechanic in which the dungeon master can describe what is happening to the characters and there are mostly flavor-based um, elements for the characters to really feel as if they are experiencing this um, uh, continuing uh, corruption that is plaguing Phandalin because they will see all of these things happening around them as things start to change and shift in scary ways. It's a weird question to ask. Uh, how do you handle like strange monster voices and stuff? Like we've got a lot of goblins in this. Well, when I'm doing them myself, I do them e either very well or very badly. Uh, <laughs> first of all, that's probably full stop. That's how I do them. Some of them very well or some of them very badly. You know, the goblins end up being kind of silly and the other monsters tend to be sort of, you know, menacing or ominous. Uh, one of the things that I do with voices that trips up my players a lot is I make some of the more uh, villainous creatures that are really self-assured about what they're, they know their malicious plan is the right thing to do from their perspective. Right. So I end up giving them an awful lot of uh, surety in their, well, of course this is the way. You must realize that. And uh, and the player's like, no, no, we don't, we don't. We disagree and we'll disagree by the points of our swords or our fireballs. That's, yeah. <laughs> there are so many various locations even though you start out in the small town, how do you, as a dungeon master, like evoke the weirdness of, say, a location or the coolness of a location or you know, something that you've never experienced in your real life? Well, this is one of the things that I really liked is the number of different dungeons and adventure locations uh, that we presented here. And one of the things I like in putting these together is to think about how was this location used by the people who built it versus how was it used by the creatures or monsters that inhabit it now? Um, and one of the things that I like to do is mix up the dungeon. Um, so for example, a underground area in this one that was in use a long time ago uh, had some main artery. It was a place where people lived, so it has to have some main hallways for people to walk through and everything's kind of easy to get to. Like, I mean, like in a house, you wanna make sure that everything is easy to reach. But for the purposes of a dungeon, what's happened is either part of it has collapsed or flooded, or for some reason it becomes sort of a more uh, convoluted way to get around in it. It lets you look at how was this once before versus how it is now, and it's the kind of thing that lets you describe, oh, well, these, this staircase obviously went down to a whole series of rooms, you would guess, but since everything's collapsed, you're gonna have to find some way around. Evidence of things that were in the past uh, they give sort of a hint of what m the place might have been like before. Yeah. Um, also gives you some real, real good advice for DMing to make the place feel alive. 
inscriptions that are on the wall, old furnitures that were there, and a place that was, for example, once inhabited by dwarves, chairs are going to be shorter and, you know, the stonework is going to be more exquisite, for example. Even describing that rather than, here is a room you come into, being able to talk about what, what's there makes the, the players really feel immersed in the dungeon location.